Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm old enough to remember when we used to game on big box TVs and those old fashioned TVs from way back in the day. And fast forward to today, it's just crazy to see how much um, displays have improved over time to what they are now. So without further ado, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Acer Nitro. Now this is a 23.6 inch HDR monitor with 1500R curvature. And before we even get into that, I'll just like to remind you to make sure you subscribe so you stay tuned for more videos. All right now let's get into it. Now obviously the first thing that jumps out is the curvature of the monitor itself. Now as I mentioned before this is a 1500R curved monitor and so basically what this means is for example in this case monitors that are curved will go from 1500 to 1800 and so on and so forth. The lower the number the more curved it is and in this case I'm looking at a 1500R curved monitor. 1500 represents the amount of millimeters and the R just stands for the radius and putting those together just signifies to you uh, the curvature of the monitor itself. Now the good thing about curved monitors is they are more immersive and at the same time they also reduce eye strain because as the surface itself uh, just folds a little bit there's less eye strain just trying to pick out different positions of the monitor whereas uh, and on the flat monitor, everything's just more uh, a little further away from your eyes, so it doesn't look as immersive and it's a little more straining to the eyes. Now, this monitor is a little bit bigger than I even thought, and of course, it's only 23.6 inches, but this just goes to show you how big 23.6 can actually look or feel just due to the fact of how slim the bezels are, just to keep everything more uh, minimalistic and immersive. Now, the human eye is able to track about 1000 R in terms of uh, curvature, so at about 1500, it falls right in line to keep everything just smooth and not too overpowering on the eyes. Now one of the things that impacts monitors or the quality of monitors a lot is backlight bleeding and that's when the light shining through to make the monitor uh, give its color and its images is just seeping through the cracks a little bit and just coming out from uh, different spots that it shouldn't be and that's technically due to bad uh, design or architecture or a monitor that just wasn't well built together. Now the good thing is for this from all my hours of use and testing I wasn't able to detect any form of backlight uh, bleeding at any point during my use and to be honest that's just what makes a monitor or breaks it is uh, the quality that it's made it. Now of course the curvature isn't the only thing about monitors so might as well also look at some of the physical aspects. So you do get two HDMI 2.0 ports and one 1.4 display port. Now the back is also designed so that you can put it on a monitor stand if you want or a dual monitor setup, triple, whichever setup you may be running. And that's important for something I'll get into uh, just a, a bit later. And the monitor also has a zero frame design. Now that's just Acer's way of basically making the bezels as slim as possible. Just so in case you want to run a dual monitor setup, triple, you can just put the monitors as close together as possible side by side and everything will still flow as seamlessly as possible. Uh, now the thing is I only have one so I'll only be doing a review on one monitor instead of what it would look like if you were doing uh, the zero frame setup where you have a couple different monitors just lined up together. It also has AMD FreeSync. Now this is important if you want to make lag as little as possible and induce the distortion between frames. It also has a 165Hz refresh rate and the average expected now on the market is about 144Hz so going up and beyond to 165 is of course even better and an improvement of what you might expect uh, at this point in the market. Putting that type of frame rate together and the fact that you also have AMD FreeSync it just makes all the colors and pictures look better, everything flows smoother and everything just looks richer and much more vibrant. Now the resolution is a full HD 1920 by 1080p and just to follow a rule of thumb below 27 inches that is about perfect and right around 27 inches and above it's good to have a 2k display just for everything looks uh, better and more accurate and about 32 inches everything should be at least 4k uh, just so the pictures look as accurate otherwise it's gonna start looking a little it's just gonna start looking a little bizarre now as for the screen the screen maxes out is about 250 nits so that's good enough uh, good enough to keep the colors vibrant and as someone who edits uh, videos personally I do have some things that I'm appreciative of uh, of this monitor 
and one of them is the color accuracy which i do value a lot because going through the editing process you want to make sure everything looks as color accurate as possible just to reflect what people will be watching when you're done editing or if you're sending it for a commission or if you're editing a video for somebody else just so everything doesn't look a little shady or a little off once the whole process is done and i think it does live up to the 165 refresh rate because everything looks uh, as smooth and it doesn't look choppy or doesn't look laggy when watching any footage or even going through gameplay everything just seems to flow smoothly so in the frame rate aspect i think it holds well so the good thing about this monitor is that it promises a lot at such a small budget whereas some of the specs that you're getting on this thing you might be paying two three hundred more in the market uh, which i have done before as i said before the what we're gonna get into is the, at least the aesthetics which is something i actually didn't like that much so for one you cannot elevate or adjust the height of the monitor to a level that you may find comfortable unless you maybe have an office chair that can elevate you or change positions to different heights that you might see fit and tilting is the only thing that you can do to i guess adjust the angles and viewing perspectives it's good but it's not good enough in terms of just being able to adjust the monitor to whichever way you see fit now of course i've been using this for a while now and besides the inability to be able to change and customize the way you want the monitor to stand i would have loved to be able to adjust it so it can be higher or lower depending on where i'm sitting how i'm sitting and what i'm doing but i still do think it's a well built monitor and of course nothing's perfect so it does have some aesthetic things that i would have liked to improve make better but at the end of the day i'd still argue it's one of the better budget monitors on the market and obviously i'm just one man one man only with an opinion but let me know what you think what are your perspectives on the monitor if you do plan on getting in maybe you might have the same critiques i do i'm jadeja i'm out